right, welcome to the Higher Rockstar Talent Podcast. Today I have with me someone that has a really, really super interesting story. Her name is Catherine Lopez. We call her Cat. Cat, uh, why do you have a nickname, Cat? Is it just because of the Catherine? Or yeah, I don't like. I don't like my it? name. <laughs> I don't like my name. I never have. <laughs> cool, cool. Catherine, guys, has a, a story that's interesting, and it's really worth sharing. What, what we're talking about today mainly is culture and environment and why it's so important. And it's not always about money, but, you know, I want you as we talk, as I talk to Kat, and she shares some of her story and some of the things that happened over the last, I don't know, six months, um, it, it's really interesting. So I want you to understand it. So, Kat, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about you and you're a mom and, you know, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yep. Single mom. I got four boys and drive me absolutely insane. Um, uh, I pretty much just work in home to the kids. That's, that's my life. Wow. So excited. <laughs> that must get interesting. Yeah. Oh yeah. Interesting is not the word. I have four boys as well, too. So I know exactly what you're going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you don't have twins. That changes the dynamic. That's true. Very, very true. <laughs> I have I got four boys, four girls. But what it does is with mine, it goes boy, girl, girl, boy, girl, girl. So there's there's no twins. But lucky. I do get pairs that want to kill each other once in a while. So. <laughs> All I right. Feel like Let's jump right in. So culture and environment. Let's just talk a little bit what that means. So culture environment let's break this down and this will be the baseline of what we're talking about today so culture and what i mean by culture is i mean specifically workplace culture so and that's you know defined as the way that you know the company does things right it's 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 how everything works it's the overall character of the business and it's very unique to each company so it's not like you can take a template and just apply it and say hey that's what our culture is going to be it really has to be specific to the people in the industry and what happens within the four walls of your operation be it a restaurant or retail or whatever it is and the reason why you want to have a strong culture is you got to have res the people have to have respect for each other leadership the connection between the co-workers themselves and with the customers. There's got to be a fairness, right? There has to be teamwork that leads to results that we're after, company goals, taking care of customers, hitting sales metrics. And really the biggest piece of culture is to foster employee engagement as opposed to having disengagement, which is the real problem today in a lot of operations. We're in the restaurant industry and we see this a lot in the restaurant industry is the disengagement is what causes so much havoc in the operation. Disengagement is costing businesses millions and millions of dollars. So Gallup did a survey and they estimate that two thirds of everybody's employees are disengaged. So think about that, right? You know, 20, I mean, 75% uh, of all the employees in your operation either don't want to be there, either are going through the motions or they're just trading time for money. And this is costing companies tons, tons, tons of time, tons of money. So, and you have to have a level of communication and transparency. Now, when you put all this together and you have this workplace culture, now you've created an environment. And I define an environment as leadership puts the factors in place for engagement in the workplace. And that's things like knowledge, right? Training, teaching people things, skills, giving people tools that they need to do their job, resources, both physical and psychological. You know, when we talk about environment, we always talk about what we see. But what about a place where people can speak their mind and tell you what they think, right? Tell you if something's wrong. And we're going to get into that with Kat today, because that's one piece of her story that's very interesting. So you got to be able to create a space where, that makes people want to come to work. They don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, what the fuck? I don't want to go to work, right? This is what we're trying to avoid and move away from today, which is so hard. So Kat, so yes. me and you did an interview. Um, yeah. We did what's called a fit test. And Kat actually came in as a customer, everybody, and into our restaurant and liked what she saw so much that she wanted to be part of it. Right. Yep. Was that true? Yep, absolutely. So you went through our process, which you did the videos and the audios and our whole <laughs> um kind of, you know, application uh, process to the fit test, we got together and 
you started telling me a story. So you were with Dunkin' Donuts. How long were you with Dunkin' Donuts? Um, the majority of 17 years. 17 years. Yeah. And you went long years. And you ended up leaving and going to Starbucks. I did, yep. Yeah. And what made you leave Dunkin' and then go to Starbucks? Uh, the situation at the store I was working in, it was just super toxic environment. My boss was like buddy, buddy with the other shift leader and an employee. And they would hang out in the office all day, not working, doing whatever they wanted. They didn't want to deal with work at all. They just want to hang out. And between that and the fact that I was driving 30 minutes each way to Wilmington, it just, it wasn't worth the hassle. So that's what, that's what kind of forced you or drove you away because yeah. you you became disengaged while you were yeah. working there. You just didn't absolutely. want to be there anymore. You would you would go. You would kind of dread go. I'm sure the drive oh, thirty absolutely. minutes there was like, should I turn around? Right. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I listened to like Highway to Hell my whole way to work because that's exactly oh, how I felt. <laughs> oh, that's crazy, crazy. Okay, so now you're at Starbucks, yes. and you you're working at Starbucks, and you're happy, not happy. Tell me about Starbucks. I was only there for a couple days. Um, honestly, I walked in. No experience at Starbucks whatsoever. They hired me as a shift leader. Um, There was only one other one in the whole store. And from the, the, the longest day that I spent there, listening to everybody else talk and, you know, discuss what goes on in the store, I knew I was walking into the same exact thing that I had just left. And I didn't want to do that. Like, I left to get away from all that, not to just, you know, change the scenery and be still dealing with the same shit. So what it became is it became a lateral move. You didn't move up or down. You moved left right. to right. Exactly. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now you come into our operation and you like the environment. Mm-hmm. Tell me about what you saw when you came in. What, what are some of the things that, you know, from the other side of the counter, um, on the customer side, the, the customer's point of view, what did you see? Uh, everybody was always in a good mood, super friendly, like go out of your way, their way to help you. Like that was how I actually ended up applying. I had started to apply once and then I got to the videos and stuff and I was like, I don't really know if I want to do this, but I kept coming in as a regular. And one of the people that worked always at the front counter, Kelly, me and her got into a conversation one day about Duncan. And turns out she had worked for the same people that I had worked for when I first started. So, you know, we got into the whole conversation and she's like, oh, you should come work here. It's so much better. Like, it's none of the drama. Like we have at Duncan. Everybody gets along. Everybody helps each other out. So I was like, "Hmm, okay. Like for what I can see, everybody, it's like a family. So I'm like, all right, sign me up. I want into this. (laughs) So, you know, I I, I just want to pause for a second and talk about that conversation with Kelly. Now, Mm -hmm. That that's what I mean by connection, right? So Kelly yep. and you, you know, started probably yapping about something not even about that, and then the right. conversation meandered that way because mm-hmm. you guys had something in common, right? Right, and you know, you started saying, "Hey, this is why I." Or Kelly said, "I'm assuming said to you, hey, this is why I jumped and made a change. You should consider doing the same." Yep. Beautiful. Working, right? Since we worked for the same people too, I knew she knew exactly how I felt. Because she walked in your shoes before. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. So now you come through the process and you do what we call the fit test, which is just our process of bringing people through our compensation plan. And mm-hmm. I call it walking the block. We take a walk through how things work in our organization. And I think when me and you met, one of the, we actually had an, an issue with availability. Your yeah. availability didn't fit what my compensation plan said. Right. And I, I remember specifically, we met at a Panera Bread and we yep. had a conversation. And actually, in that moment, I didn't hire you. I no. said to myself, hey, the availability doesn't fit. It's not fair to everybody else. I would stay there. Right. How did you feel? Because, man, we're going to keep going on this conversation. But how did you feel in that moment? Like, in your mind, were you saying, is this guy out of his mind? Like, what is he? Are you kidding? No, I mean, no, not really. You know, if if it doesn't work for what the company needs, then it doesn't work. Because I know, like, as a mom, and especially a single mom, my availability can suck. Because I have to work around school and vacations and sports and all this nonsense. And it's not like I can just work anytime. So I know my schedule can be hard to work around. So I 100% understand if someone's like, no, I can't work with that. I'm sorry. I know I'm qualified. I know I'd be great at the job. But my availability, 
is where I run into issues. So I 100% understand if you can't work with it, you can't work with it. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you may have to just help me fill in the blank of the event. Mm -hmm. So I don't know, a week or two go by, we we stayed in touch and communicated. Mm -hmm. And then at some point you said, hey, Alan, I I still want to do it. I'm going to take a the pay cut, you know, I'm going to yeah. take the the drop in pay, which yeah. I don't remember what the number was. It doesn't even matter, but I'm going to yeah, take it. Yeah, it was significant. It was significant. It was, so it was a pretty significant, which that, that means, man, you got to be almost pulled to, to do that if it's, you know, significant. Yeah. So you made the jump, you came in, we start working together. And I think what happened at that point is everything, because that's, you know, that's what's tough. You know, you just said something you know, very interesting, right? Like, hey, I understand, I take the responsibility that my availability is very haphazard and mm-hmm. you know, it's got all these holes in it like Swiss cheese, right? So, <laughs> right. you know, but now as a business owner, I'm sitting there and I'm trying to make sure if the person's a right fit coming in and everybody says they're wonderful. Everybody says they're the best thing since sliced bread. Everybody says they're the cure for cancer, but you don't know until they start working, right? So, right. and and I think that's what I was struggling with that day is that, is is the juice worse than the squeeze? If she comes right. in and you know and she can't do what she says, then you know it's very unfair to everybody else. So you come in and you clearly show, hey man, I know what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, I operate at a higher level than most of the people around me. Right. But I think what was interesting in your case is that you took that step back to go forward. Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that people do not do today. They don't say you know what, maybe the deal coming out of the gate isn't exactly what I wanted. But in your case, you said, hey, I know my ability. I know I'm an ass kicking machine. I know, you know, what I can and can't do. And I think you'll be impressed, but I'm going to come in and show you. Right. You know, and and when you came in, you know, you you did exactly that. It was, it wasn't, hey, I'm wonderful. Look at me. It was just, I always looked when I used to play football, there was always two different people that became the captain of the football team. There was one guy who had a real loud mouth and would yell and scream and move his hands around a lot. And most times that was the quarterback and he became the captain of the football team. Mm -hmm. And then the other guy was real quiet, never said a word, would just run out in the field and knock you on your ass. And he did things (laughs) by doing, right? And that was usually the center or a linebacker, you know, just the meanest person on the team. (laughs) Now, I don't think you're a mean person, but I think that's what you did at that point. You said, hey, I'm just going to come in. I'm just going to show you that I'm badass. Right. We're going to go from there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you come into the restaurant, you start working, you know, tell me about what happened. And as you, you started work, now you, you, you had saw the environment from one side of the counter. Now that you came around to the other side of the counter, was it exactly what we were selling? Absolutely. I mean, you, you, know, you have your problem people here and there, which, you know, tell you the reason I came in. Ended up being one of those problems. That's a whole nother story. But I mean, for the most part, everybody was as amazing as they seemed from the other side. Well, you know, and I think that's something that happens a lot, right, with business owners is Mm -hmm. we sell something, right? We want to say that all the employees are liars and they don't do what they say, right? Which, (laughs) yes, there's a level of that that's absolutely true. But I think sometimes we're liars, right? Mm -hmm. We sell something that we don't 100% do. Hey, come work for us, man. We're the best. We do this. We, you know, you you can't touch us over here. And then when you, just like what happened at Starbucks, you come in and you're like, man, did I get hornswoggled? This is exactly where I left, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm sure, you know, people that you know, you you see this over and over and over again. So this is where it gets really, really interesting, guys, right? So what happened was, is I go to my employees and I ask them questions. I say, hey, tell me what you like. Tell me what you hate. Tell me what's horrible. And then I shut up and I listen. I remember the movie White Men Can't Jump. And um, there was this one scene where uh, Wesley Snipes and Woody Harrelson were in the car driving. Wesley Snipes got all mad because Woody Harrelson put on Jimi Hendrix. And he said, what are you doing? Like, you can't put on Jimi Hendrix. And he goes, what are you talking about? I like Jimi Hendrix, right? So Wesley Snipes is like, no, no, no. You you listen to Jimi Hendrix, but you don't hear him. Uh-huh. And I remember that scene so vividly because Woody Harrelson didn't get it. He's like, what are you talking? Like, you're an idiot. What are you talking right. about? And was- Wesley Snipes was pissed. He's like, no, you don't hear him. You know, you just listen. And that's your problem, man, right? Today's episode is sponsored by Smart Systems. Are you tired of your best people being poached? You know, stolen? Smart helps you create unpoachable rock stars. 
check out the link below today. And I take that and I, so, so there were, there were times I came to you and other people and I said, all right, tell me I look fat in this dress. I want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and you did, you told me, you told me something specific about a way that we paid people Mm-hmm. And guys, it was so interesting, right? Because my first reaction when she told me what she told me was mm-hmm. I got pissed off. Yep. Right? I was I got mad. I was <laughs> like, but I wasn't mad at you. Right. I was mad more at me. Right? I was like, how the f- do I have a hole in my plan like the size of the Grand Canyon? <laughs> and it was interesting, guys, right? It was interesting. What Kat brought to the table for me was, and again, right, that environment. Remember I talked about the very beginning of this podcast environment is and i and i'll read the definition to you the factors that create the context for engagement in the workplace knowledge skills tools resources both physical and psychological what cat was doing was psychological she was telling me something that i had to hear right she didn't pat me on the head and rub my belly and say yeah hey, alan it's it's pretty good no she said alan this sucks and here's why right and that was like a punch in the head, right? That was beautiful because what it did is it got me thinking. It got me it got me working through some stuff. And what Kat said was, well, Kat, why don't you tell them what, what you came up with? What you what were your, your frustration was in that moment? So when I first started working, like I would open um certain days and I was just opening, no big deal. Well, you know, as time went on, I started picking up more responsibilities. Now I was baking, now I was, you know basically running sandwich station, which is not an easy spot and not everybody can do it. Um, you know, prep all this stuff. I was doing all these extra jobs, but my compensation was still the same. So after a while I'm getting frustrated because I'm like, look, I'm doing all this extra work and I like to do it. It's not that I don't want to do it. I enjoy doing all this stuff, but I feel like there should be some difference in compensation from when I first started and I was only doing X, Y, Z. Now I'm doing the whole entire alphabet why am I still getting paid the same? And it wasn't just me. It was other people too. Like there's like certain ones of us who we all do those extra jobs and none of us were seeing a change in conversation and we were all getting frustrated. I just happened to be the one who spoke up and was like, Hey, this is not fair. So let me ask you a question. Was, was, was your frustration because not just because you were doing these different things, right. But because you were getting paid with the same plan that someone else was that wasn't doing all those things. Right. There you go. So I had like three extra jobs, but I'm still getting compensated the same as somebody who only has one. So this is, this is where I started digging deep and I started looking internally is I said to myself, okay, you got a person who operates at a higher level, like twice what someone else operates at. So in, in our compensation plan, if I just give you a quick high level view of it, we have this one piece we call pay to play and pay to play is like the stuff that the company needs for you to do. Can you work weekends? Can you open the store? Can you close the store? Can you know this kind of stuff? Then we have another section that's called pay to perform where and, we're, and we'll talk. We've talked about that in other episodes where we you know, the things that irritate management the most, like, are you late? Do you call in? You know, do you break company policies? Do you have urgency? Are you on your cell phone all the time? All this kind of stuff is the case, is the pay to perform piece. But then there was a, there was something missing, and this is what Cat was bringing to my attention. Now, it actually took me a week. Maybe, was it man, maybe two? Cat, do you think? Yeah, I think, it was, I think it was two weeks. Yeah, two weeks of me. <laughs> I do this tool that I have a coach and a program I'm in called Warrior, and I do this tool called the Stack and. The stack allows me to work through problems without like getting a gun and going shooting people at the post office, right? Like, I, <laughs> you know, I get upset, but I, I do it, you know, with a process that I have in my computer. And I worked this out over and over and over again to get to the place where we are today, where I kept, you know, the same thing I kept saying over and over again. Okay, cat, if you take cat specifically, there's things that she performs at like a thoroughbred racehorse, right? She's like <laughs> way up here, right? It, it would take two people to replace just her in this particular role. But there's other things that she doesn't do because she can't or for whatever reason, availability. She's got the four <laughs> kids that are tugging at her all the time. you know. So there's things she can't do. And it doesn't mean that she's good or bad. It just means she can't do it, right? So that's not available to her. But it's avail- it may be available to the other people right? That don't perform 
as high as cat does in these certain things. And I said, that's where the problem comes in. So, you know, let, let's, if we use a scale of say one to 10, right, I have some perform players that perform, they're okay. They're not great, but they're, they're okay. They're not bad. They're just, they're just maybe a four or a five, right? And now our job is to coach them and make them better. But cat comes in, she's operating in that same role as a 10. Right. Not only that, she's able, like a mom normally does, right? She can do two things at once. Because now not only is she working this role over here, she's over there throwing stuff in the oven and cooking. And yeah. <laughs> now by doing that, she's actually saving me money because she's running two two positions mm-hmm. as opposed to just one, right? Very important. So I started looking at that and I said, okay, now I see. So we we invented, we actually changed the compensation plan, altered the compensation plan because of this conversation. Mm-hmm. Again, very irritated. Took me took me weeks of reiteration to go through it and tweaking because what I had to figure out is how do I do it for everybody, right? But how do I block the person who doesn't deserve it? Because let's be honest, as business owners, right? We want to pay good people. We want to pay them the money. We do not even care. We don't even flinch at it. But the bad people, that irritates the shit out of us when we're paying bad people more money than they deserve. That irritates us, right? So when we got to this place, I, I actually wrote it all out. I brought it to cat. I literally threw up on paper. <laughs> right? Did I not yep. do that? <laughs> yeah, you and did. Said, yeah, what do you think? And then she she told me what she thought. And we we tweaked it and we refined it and we tweaked it and we refined it until we got to the place where we we're at now. What do you think of it now? Oh, I think it's amazing. So it it's, creates yeah. that separation that you needed mm-hmm. right now. When, when you, when that separation happened, do you feel valued? I think that's the important question. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. See now that that's what this is all about. So if cat feels valued right now, her, her drive into work isn't miserable. She's not listened to highway to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use that later. But, <laughs> You know, now she comes to work. She's happy. Listen to her. She's laughing. She's actually at the store right now. I am. <laughs> and happy to be there. See, guys, this is what it's all about. So, Kat, is there anything else you want to leave with whoever's listening to this today? Leave the toxic environment. Look at that. Even if it means taking a pay cut, do it. It will be worth it in the end. You might have to, like you said, take a step back to move forwards. But sometimes that's what it takes. And you you just have to do it. Oh, so awesome. That is like gold right there, guys. Gold. <laughs> and you're hearing this not from me because I can wave my hands. And this is from, you know, a real employee, a real player, a real rock star. And you're hearing it from her. You know, what, what she's telling you that the secret and the magic, if you have the culture, if you have the environment, this is what's possible. So thank you so much today, Kat. You were awesome. So thank you. people listening, give me a call. You know, all my information will be down below. Um, what do you got to lose? We just have a conversation. We have a cup of coffee and we talk, right? And see if this, we can create this type of culture and environment for you in your operation. But there's three things that I need you to do right now as you leave this. I need you to hit like. I need you to hit subscribe on this podcast. Hit the notification bell. So as we add new podcasts and we bring on more amazing people like Kat, you can get notified on it. All right? So ciao for now. We'll see you next week. Thank you.